This video is about Nemertian worms, like this unidentified green worm I found in some empty barnacle tests from Alameda Bay while looking at the little clam Lysaea. We'll use this phylogeny to organize the animals in the video. Note that members of two groups, the Paleonemertia and Polydiophora, have separate mouth and proboscis openings and do not bear stylets on the proboscis, that is, their proboscis is unarmed. But Hoplonemertians have stylets and their mouth and proboscis pores share an opening at the anterior end of the body. We have five species to look at today. I cannot identify one of them, so we'll just call it orange face for obvious reasons. It's definitely not a hoplonemertian, but I don't know if it's a paleonemertian or a polydiophoran. Let's start with cerebratulus, a polydiophoran. I don't know where this individual came from. It's preserved and was in our CSULB collection. These normally live buried in mud or sand flats. If you look at the anterior end of this one inside you, you can see one of the two cephalic slits. In ventral view, you can see a very large mouth. Here is that cephalic slit, the right cephalic slit at higher magnification. And in ventral view, you can see the mouth at higher magnification as well. If you look at the anterior tip of the body, you can see a vertical slit. That is the proboscis pore, completely separate from the mouth. This is orange face, that unidentified nemertian that is not a hoplonemertian. At the very anterior tip of the body, you can faintly see the proboscis pore. Further back, you can see the ventral mouth. You can see the proboscis sliding around in the rinca seal here. It even pops out of the proboscis pore a little bit. The rinca seal and proboscis go far back into the body. The proboscis is all that sinuous material you see sliding around inside the body. 
You can see its length more clearly in this compressed specimen. I'd estimate that the proboscis takes up about half the body length. Here's the animal's anterior end with just a tiny bit of proboscis sticking out. If you look a little bit posterior to that, you can clearly see the mouth. And here's a little more proboscis action. The proboscis can be pulled back into the rinca seal with a retractor muscle. This is a much larger species, Paranomertes peregrina, from the coast of Oregon. Dr. Richard Emlett from the Oregon Institute of Marine Biology was kind enough to collect this and the next two living species and send them to me to film. Paranomertes is a hoplonomertian that feeds most commonly on annelid worms. With transmitted light, you can clearly see many ocelli, and you can also see the two lobes of the cerebral ganglion, as well as the lateral longitudinal nerves that run from the cerebral ganglion posteriorly. This animal is a little compressed under a cover slip, so the proboscis is poking out a bit as well. Paranomertes is quite opaque, so to see details of the proboscis, one has to dissect it out, which it turns out is pretty easy. It's also impressive, it gives you a sense of how long that structure is. Here is that isolated proboscis. 
The swollen region near the posterior end is the bit that has the basis stylet and accessory stylet sacs. You can see those easily on a compound microscope. One stylet is mounted on the basis ready to be used, and you can see two accessory stylet sacs producing new stylets for when the one on the basis is used up. The basis is more or less rectangular in side view. The stylets have this interesting braided or spiral structure that is really different from the stylets of the other hoplonomerdians we'll see. And here is the next hoplonomerdian, Amplectonema gracilli. It's dark green dorsally and more cream colored ventrally. It has lots of ocelli on the head as well, though in a different pattern than Paranomerdes. In ventral view, you can see the cerebral ganglion, and you can also see that the stylet is really close to the anterior end of the body. I dissected out the proboscis like in Perinomerdes. Amplectonema also has two accessory stylet sacs, but the basis is very long and different in shape than that of Perinomerdes. The stylets are also very different in shape and don't have that braided structure. The last species we have to look at is Amphipterus formidabilis. Again, there are lots of ocelli on the dorsal surface of the head, but their arrangement is different than in the other species we've looked at. You can see a short cephalic slit in side view. In transmitted light, you can see the ocelli more clearly and the cerebral ganglion. Because it's compressed with a cover slip, the proboscis is also forced out a little bit. Amphipterus has a long proboscis like that of Paranomerdes.
In this species of Amphipyrus, the basis, the shape of the stylets, and especially the number of accessory stylet sacs are very different from the other species we've seen. This individual has 10 accessory stylet sacs.